Hey everybody, Mr. Mathblog here. This lesson is uh, multiplying mixed numbers. This is 7-9 uh, in our textbook. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathblog.com. And if you guys can, if this lesson is uh, helpful, would you click like? And, and we just created a Facebook page, so that would be cool if you can find us there too. Okay, here's our common course strand for our teachers. And our essential question is, how do we multiply mixed numbers? So we're going to show one with a model, and then we'll show you a nice little shortcut. So here's the problem here. So Chris has one and one-fourth pounds of grapes. He gave one-third of his grapes to his sister. How many pounds of grapes did Chris give to his sister? Okay, so um, uh, is the amount of Chris's sister less than or greater than one and one-fourth? Okay, well, since he gave one-third of the amount of grapes, well, this is less than one. One-third is less than one, so it's going to be less than uh, what Chris had started with, with one and one-third. So any number that you multiply that's less than one, it'll always be, the product will always be less than what you started with there. So here we go. We're going to multiply one-third times one and one-fourth. So this says one-third of one and one-fourth. So we're going to find out how much, uh, how many grapes, how many pounds of grapes uh, Chris's sister has right here. So one way is we're going to use a model. So we'll shade the model to represent all the grapes, okay? All right, so all the grapes weigh uh, one and one fourth pounds right here. So we have uh, here's four fourths or one pound right here, and we'll shade all of these plus this one right here. So it'll be one and one fourth right there. Okay. All right, and then uh, then we're going to double shade the model to represent the amount of grapes Chris's sister receives. So. His sister receives uh, one-third of the grapes right there, of his grapes right there. So we're going to draw horizontal lines across the rectangles to show thirds right there, okay? So horizontal lines is going to go like this. So I'm gonna we're going to draw horizontal lines that go right across here, and then another one right across here. So it looks like it's cutting them up into equal thirds right there. Can you see this piece equals this piece equals this piece right there? All right, and then we're going to double shade uh, the model to represent the amount of grapes his sister receives. So if all of the shaded parts is uh, all the grapes, then we'll just uh, shade this bottom little um, row right here to show the amount that Chris's sister got uh, right there. So here's the amount that Chris's sister got uh, of grapes right there. It's one-third of all the grapes right there, okay? All right, so how many parts does each rectangle show? Well, this rectangle has has four right here, has four more parts, and then these four parts. So there's 12 parts in this rectangle and 12 parts in this rectangle. So each rect rectangle shows 12 little parts right there, okay? So what fraction of each rectangle is shaded twice, okay? In this rectangle, there's four that's shaded twice. In this rectangle, there's one that's shaded twice, okay? So four twelfths and one twelfth. There's four of the twelve shaded. Over here, there's one of the twelve shaded. All right, let's slide that up right there. Okay, so what fraction represents all the parts that are shaded twice, okay? So it's going to be here. We're going to do the four twelfths plus this one twelfth right there. That's going to equal five twelfths, okay? Don't think it's five twenty-fourths, you guys. A lot of the, some kids think it's five twenty-fourths. Yeah, there's 24 pieces right here, but this little piece right here is 1 12th. Just imagine if, if I slid this little piece right over here into that, and, and then if we just pretended like that's no longer there right there, and I said, okay, that goes away. How many of these 12ths right here are shaded right there? There's five of them, so this is five twelfths right there. Okay, let's get all that back into position right there. Okay, all right, so there's five twelfths right there. So Chris's sister received five twelfths pounds of grapes right there. Okay, all right, so here's another way, you guys. We're going to multiply uh, by renaming the mixed numbers as fractions. Okay, so we're going to write the mixed number as a fraction that's greater than one. Okay, so one and one fourth is the same as, okay, this is four fourths and this this is one fourth, so four fourths plus one fourth is five fourths right there. Okay, and then here's a different way to do this, you guys. Here's your one and one fourth, and you, as you get uh, in the higher math classes, most of the kids do it this way right here. They do the denominator times the whole number out here. Four times one is four, and then we add the top number. Four times one plus one is five. Four. So that's where that 5 comes from right there. Okay, so let's multiply the fractions right here. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 1 times 5 on top, and then on bottom it's going to be 3 times 4. So 1 times 5 gives us 5, and 3 times 4 is 12. 
Okay, so there it is right there, 5 twelfths right there. So that's another way to do that. So explain why our answer is reasonable. Okay, well, 1 third times 1 and 1 fourth, since we multiplied 1 and 1 fourth by a number that's less than 1, here it's this 1 third right there, then our product, which is 5 twelfths, is going to be less than our number that we started with right there. So if we multiply a number that's less by a number that's less than 1, our, our answer is going to be a number that's less than what we started with right there. Okay, so here's another way. So uh, we're going to rename the whole number. So let's write the product in simplest form right here. Okay, so we're going to we're going to do what we did in the last lesson, and then we're going to simplify our answer right here. So so determine how the product will be compared to the greater factor. Okay, so we're going to multiply 12 times 2 and 1 6. So since 2 and 1 6 is greater than 1 then our product's going to be greater than this factor right here. So since this 2 and 1 6 is greater than 1, then we know that our answer is going to be, our answer, which is our product, is going to be greater than 12 right there. Okay, so let's uh, write the whole numbers as, uh, the whole number, let's write this whole number as 12 over 1 and change this to um, 6 times 2 is uh, 12, plus 1 is uh, 13, so this becomes 13 6 right there. Okay, and then here I did it the other way. This 2 is the same as 12, 6 right there. That's 2 plus this 1, 6 right there. 12, 6 plus 1, 6 is that 13, 6. Okay, so here's 12 over 1. Here's 13 over 6. Okay, now we're going to multiply the fractions. Okay, so now we're going to multiply 12 times 13 goes right here, and 1 times 6 goes right here. Okay, and then I know 12 times 12 is 144. So 12 times 13 is 144 with one more 12, because there's 13 12s this time instead of 12 12s. So 144 plus 12 is 156, okay, over 6 right there. Okay, and then uh, we're going to write the product in simplest form. Okay, well, we don't have to do long division. We can break this 156 down into multiples of 6. Okay, 60 is a nice multiple of 6, so I just did groups of 60. 60 plus 60 is 120, so 120 plus 36 is 156. So 156 over 6 is 60 over 6 plus 60 over 6 plus 36 over 6. This is 10, this is 10, this is 6, so it's 10 plus 10 plus 6, which is going to get us um, 26 right there. Okay, so 12 times 2 and 1, 6 is the same as 26 right there. Huh? Pretty good, huh? All right, here's another way. We're going to use the distributive property. We're going to write the products in simplest form, okay? So 16 times 4 and 1, 8. All right, so let's rewrite the expression by using the distributive property. Okay, so instead of 16 times 4 and an 8, let's split up this fraction to 4 plus an 8. 8. So we'll put 4 plus an 8 right there. And it'll be 16 times 4 plus an 8 right there. Okay. All right. So now let's multiply 16 by each number. So 16 times 4, 16 times 1 8 right there. Okay. So uh, that's what we're going to do and put in the 1 8 right there. Okay. 16 times 4 is, um, okay. And they told us that uh, 16 times 1 8 is 2. Just think 16 divided by 8 is 2. That's where this 2 came from right there. Okay. 16 times 4. I know 16 times 2 is 32. So double 32 is 64. 16 times 4, since 4 is double 2. All right. So now now we're going to go ahead and add. So 64 plus 2 is 66 right there. Okay, so uh, 16 times 4 and 1 eighth is equal to 66. Okay, nice shortcut right there. All right, so explain why we might cho uh, choose to use the distributive property to solve example 2. Okay, well, it was nice to do the distributive property because... 1 8th, when we did 1 8th of 16, 1 8th of 16 is, is 2. It was nice and easy, so it made it easy to compute. So we just had to do 16 times, uh, I don't know if you can see that, 16 times 4 is 64. 16 times 1 8th is only 2, so 64 plus 2 right there. A nice distributive property. All right, let's do this one. Um, when we multiply two factors greater than 1, is the product less than, between, or greater than the two factors? Well, anytime you multiply it by a number that's greater than 1, it's always going to be greater than uh, itself right there. So the product will be greater than both factors right there. All right, you guys. Hey, don't forget to click like. Take care, you guys.